Hello folks, welcome back to the Food for the Faithful channel with me, your ever so reluctant prophet, Bill Reimer. You know, I take no pleasure in being right. In fact, that isn't the point of this channel. Me being right has nothing to do with what's going on. Now we know that Trudeau broke the law, of course, when he issued the Emergency Measures Act. So we need to look at his mindset. What drives this man? And why are so few? Democracy doesn't work unless people are engaged in it. The average citizen must be engaged in this democracy for it to work. So let's examine Justin Trudeau and what he is. Justin Trudeau is a unique blend of pathological narcissism, profound imbecility, and ideological possession. He is gripped by every idea pathogen that Dr. Gad Sad wrote about in his magnum opus on the dangers to society posed by idea pathogens. That book is entitled The Parasitic Mind, How Infectious Ideas Are Killing Common Sense. Whether it be social constructivism, cultural relativism, postmodernism, political correctness, identity politics, central planned economies, 15-minute cities, admiring communist China and the CCP, cooperating with dictators, ignoring constitutional law, confiscating bank accounts, mistreating and mischaracterizing Canadian citizens, silencing legitimate protests while encouraging and even funding violent ones, the damage to the economy his neo-Marxist policies have caused, bureaucratic interference with the free market, printing money out of thin air, charging political dissidents with crimes they didn't commit while denying them swift justice, controlling the freedom of the press by using the media as a government tool of misinformation, taking bribes, cooperating with multinational conglomerates without regard for the rule of law, his costly mishandling of COVID and the illiberal policies and failures around inoculations that do not work as advertised, and the scientific impossibility of net zero, each unworkable idea, and the resulting impossible policies those ideas cause are manifestations of a completely parasitized mind, which has in turn infected the entire Canadian government along with its bureaucracy. Many appear to remain utterly aware, unaware of the threat this poses to the rule of law, constitutionalism, democracy, our future as a free people, and most importantly, the legacy we are leaving behind for our children and grandchildren to inherit. Amid this attack on every godly principle which ought to limit and constrain our government to ensure that we are being governed righteously, the bulk of the church has remained woefully silent in its condemnation of these unholy attacks on peace, order, and good government. Shame on the weak and venal church leaders and their congregants who are more interested in conforming to this world than they are in condemning this horrendous perversion of justice and sound moral leadership. I have repeatedly been proven to be correct in my warnings, and yet not one of you, not one of you has accepted my offer to help you develop a speaking series on these wicked idea pathogens that are coming for the church. We have been warned to exhort and rebuke and to ensure that sound doctrine is being practiced. These are the leading false ideologies of our time, and yet you're doing nothing. Shame on you. I'm left, almost left without any I find you contemptible, frankly. Your, your lack of rigor in defending the gospel and the truth and the light of everything that has happened and in the fact now that you know I have been repeatedly proven to be correct 
and yet I'm still mischaracterized by you. Now, I don't care about that. What I do care about is the truth. So I'm asking you a question. Why do you care so little about the truth that you refuse to speak it? There's a question that you can think and pray about today. I'd like to know the answer. I invite you, come argue with me, reason with me, or are you too afraid?